Now that we have an action button on the iPhone 15 Pro, it seems like there's a renewed interest in shortcuts. So here I'm gonna give you my Shortcuts 101 with seven easy shortcuts you can make right now, including how to do custom app icons, creating a shortcuts menu for whatever you'd like, toggling HomeKit devices on and off, the best way to create a QR code even for your Wi-Fi network, and other fun things like waking your Apple TV and opening the remote automatically. So let's jump into it. So first off, this is the Shortcuts app. It comes on every iPhone and iPad. If you don't see it right away, swipe down or tap the search button on your home screen and then just search for Shortcuts and you'll see the app there. By the way, I have a whole video on my 18 tips for Spotlight on Mac and iPhone. Check it out above with a link in the description. Now, once you open the Shortcuts app, I have a bunch of already made shortcuts, but you also have down here in the bottom right, a gallery. These are pre-made shortcuts provided by Apple that might be useful to you right out of the box. You can add some of these shortcuts just by clicking the plus button, and then you can run them right here from your library. But let's make our first shortcut. This is an easy one. I just wanna open an application from a shortcut, maybe because I wanna do a custom icon, or place this in a menu. So to make a new shortcut, I'm gonna click the plus button in the top right corner. This is now where the different actions or steps of the shortcut will live. I'm gonna tap here in the search box at the bottom, and there's an action that we'll use pretty often called open app. I'll search for open app here in the search box, and then you'll see under the scripting section, open app. I'll tap this, and now you'll see that action has been added to the shortcut screen. You'll see app is kind of grayed out here. If I tap that, now I'll have a list of all the applications on my phone, and I can choose which app I wanna open when I run this shortcut. Let's say I wanna open the Threads app when I run the shortcut. I'm gonna select Threads. Now I can name the shortcut. I like to name mine things pretty specific, so this way I know what the shortcut is at a glance. I'll just call this Open Threads. Now if I did nothing else, I can run this shortcut right now by tapping the play button in the bottom right corner. If I do that, it's automatically going to open the Threads app. One click, that's all it's doing. Now let's say I wanna add this to my home screen with a custom icon. I'll actually tap the little arrow next to the shortcut's name, and then you'll see the Add to Home Screen option. If I tap Add to Home Screen, I can now name what it's gonna look like on the home screen and choose a custom icon. So I might take away the open part and just do threads, and now I'm gonna tap the icon here. Not only can I choose the custom icon from the shortcuts menu, but I can upload a file. So if I choose photo, I actually have a custom icon right here. That looks a little familiar. I'll choose this as my custom icon. And now when it gets added to the home screen, that's the icon and name it will use. So this is actually a shortcut living on my home screen. And if I tap this shortcut here on my home screen, guess what? It opens the Threads app very quickly. You don't even see the shortcut running. So that's a way to add a custom icon to your shortcut. Let me go back into the Shortcuts app. And I also wanna show you, you can adjust the icon and color even if you're not adding it to the home screen. I can choose a different icon here. You can also search for some of the icons, change the color, and then that can be the icon and color for this particular shortcut. If you wanna get super into shortcuts, first of all, I highly recommend you check out Matthew Casanelli. I'll put a link to his website down in the video description. He has an entire library of incredible shortcuts you could just download for free. And if you have thousands of shortcuts like him or Federico Vitici from Mac Stories, you might wanna color code your shortcuts depending on topic. All right, so let's create a second shortcut. This time we're gonna make a menu. A menu might be useful, like I have here in the bottom right corner of my iPhone. This is actually a shortcuts menu that brings up a bunch of options, and this actually asks me which app I wanna open. So if I wanna to go to Threads, I can tap here, and that's what that menu option is. You can create menus for opening apps, performing different smart home actions, running different scenes. So let's go into Shortcuts. I'm gonna click the plus button in the top right. And now for our first action, I'm gonna use the search bar, and I'm actually gonna search for Menu. Now you'll see the option here, Choose from Menu. That's the action we want. You can put it in a little prompt here if you'd like. Maybe you wanna create an icon like I have to open social networks. So I'll title this social network. And then here's where I'm going to list the menu choices. So maybe I'll put threads. Maybe I want to put YouTube in this menu. And then we're going to program each individual app in a moment. Now you can also add emojis at the beginning of these titles. I like to do that because it just helps to visually distinguish these at a glance. Now you can add as many menu options as you'd like here in the menu, but I'm just gonna stick with these two for now. You'll see for each option that I have under the menu, there's now an action that says threads and YouTube, and it's waiting for me to put more steps in there. Well, if we search again for the open app action, now I can drag that open app action. I'll put one under the threads, and a cool thing in Shortcuts is you can actually tap on the little icon to the left of the action, and there's a bunch of additional options here, one of them being Duplicate. You can also favorite different actions if you're gonna be using them a lot, and then they'll show up higher in the search listings. But I'm gonna tap Duplicate because I want the same action under the YouTube. 
Now, as you might have guessed, I'm going to program this to actually open the Threads app, and this one's going to open the YouTube app. Now, when I run this shortcut, a menu will appear with these two choices, and depending on what I tap, it will open either of those apps. Let me hit Done. Now, we see our shortcut here at the top. You see why that icon and color is important. And if I tap on the shortcut to run it, you'll see that menu pop up. I have the option for either social network, and whichever one I tap, it's going to open that application. I run it again, and I want to go to Threads, then I can open that app. This is the exact process that I used to create this icon in the bottom right corner. This is just a longer menu with more options, opening these specific apps, and then I added it to home screen like I did with our first shortcut. So that's how to open an app or create a custom icon for an app, and how to create a menu of choices. Again, you can put anything in those menu choices, like smart home controls and TVs, and I'll show you that in a second. But for shortcut number three, I actually want to show you an easy automation. Here in the bottom middle of the Shortcuts app, we have the Automations tab. If we go to Automations, you see I have several automations. One sets Apple Watch faces depending on an action, like when I start a workout. I have automations based on NFC tags, and automations on when I open a certain app. And that's what we want to do. If you're like me, you probably have Orientation Lock locked all the time. I don't want my phone flipping around when I don't expect it. But if I go to the Photos app, I want it to rotate so when I show a picture full screen, it actually changes. Well, I'm going to hit the plus button here in the Automations tab, and if I scroll down, I can choose App as a starting point or trigger for my shortcut. Then I can choose when an app is opened or when it is closed. I'm going to leave it as when it's opened, and for App, I can hit Choose, and I'm going to search for Photos. So now whenever the Photos app is opened on my phone, this automation is going to run automatically. Now I can choose to run after confirmation where a little menu will appear instead of it running just by itself, but I want it to run immediately. Don't ask me to run anything or confirm it, and I don't want any notification when it's run either. You can toggle that on if you do want to see a notification. I'll hit Next, and now I'm going to search for an action. Here in the search box, I'm going to search for Orientation. And here you'll see Set Orientation Lock is an option for my shortcut. If I tap this action, I can now toggle the Orientation Lock, but I want it to be more precise than that. I actually want it to Turn Orientation Lock off. So that means when the photo app is opened, orientation lock will be turned off. That's the whole automation, no other steps. I'll just hit done. Now whenever I open the photos app, orientation will be unlocked so I can turn it and see the photos full screen. And as you can see, I actually have an additional automation set up. When photos is opened, orientation lock is turned off, and then when I close the app or just swipe to go home, orientation lock will be enabled. So here's what that looks like. Right now, if I go to the control center, orientation lock is on or locked. If I open the Photos app on my phone, that shortcut runs silently in the background. If I swipe to Control Center, you'll see that my orientation is now unlocked, and I can turn it to view a picture full screen. And if I swipe to go home, that second automation runs silently, and the lock is now on. So it's not going to change orientation even if I flip my phone. I love little automations like this, also for apps like the Blackmagic Camera. I would set orientation lock off, this way I can rotate it, or even for Halide, and I don't have to worry about it recording in the wrong orientation. I also have some automations like this for when TikTok is opened, it's actually going to mute my device, because I don't want a video or audio playing without me expecting it. All right, well, number four, let's toggle a HomeKit device. Maybe you have a light or a smart plug, and you want to be able to just toggle it on or off, regardless of its current state. Well, I'm going to create a new shortcut, and I'm going to search for Home Control. You'll see here if you have a HomeKit Home, that you can get the state of your home, meaning you can get a device's current status, or just control the home. If I choose that action, you'll now see a set, and then I can choose a scene or accessory. And here I have access to all my HomeKit scenes or my accessories. But let's choose an accessory like a light that toggles on and off. Let's choose my fill light here in the studio, which is actually a smart plug. I'll hit Next, and now you can see when I run this shortcut, it's going to turn my fill light on. But I want it to toggle, so if it's on, turn off, and if it's off, turn it on. Well, for that, we actually need to do an if statement. This is a little more advanced, but we're just going to use the search box and search for if. Here down in the scripting section, I'll see the if statement, and I'll tap that. So if, and then we have an input and condition. So in this if statement, I'm going to tap the input. And again, if you have a smart home and HomeKit devices, select accessory is actually already here as an option. So I'm going to select my accessory, and I'll go down and I'll choose my fill light again. And you can see it automatically chose is on as my qualifier. So here you can do is on or is off, but we'll just leave if fill light is on. Now I'm going to search again for my home control. And now with this action, I'm going to drag it underneath the if statement. 
So if fill light is on, I'm gonna go down, choose my fill light, and if it's on, I want my fill light to turn off. Otherwise, I'm gonna duplicate this step right here. This way I don't have to search for it again. So if fill light is on, it's gonna turn it off. Otherwise, I want my fill light to turn on. This is going to toggle it. So when I run this shortcut, either way, whether my fill light is on or off, it's going to go to the opposite state. And so I'm gonna run this shortcut and you'll see it turn on or off here in my video. So let me run it and you see my fill light turned off. If I run the exact same shortcut, changing nothing, hit the play button, now you'll see that the fill light turns on. And this is the kind of if statement you can create to toggle your HomeKit or smart home devices here in shortcuts. All right, number five, many third-party apps actually add actions into shortcuts that you can then use in your different automations or menus. So for instance, I'm gonna hit the plus button and you'll see if I searched for Tesla. If you own a Tesla, I don't yet, but you'll see all these different actions. And now I can create shortcuts and even home screen icons like we did in the first step to do all these different things to the car. Whether it's setting the heater or dog mode, open and close the charging port, all these are actions available in shortcuts because I have the Tesla app installed. Other apps also do this like Ecovax, which has the D-Bot, that's my vacuum and mop combination. I can choose all these steps based on the shortcut. Then I can use it in automations or menus or whatever I'd like. And even apps like Hue, if you have a Hue sync box like I do, you can set your sync box to start syncing your lights or turn them on or off, all right here in the shortcuts menu. If you wanna see all the apps that are available, slide up the drawer and then go over to apps and you can see all the different shortcut actions available to you in your different apps. Bear, my favorite notes app, has a ton of actions like creating a new note. You can specify the tag you save the note into or append the note. Even Amazon has some actions here that you can incorporate in shortcuts. There's a whole world of actions from third-party apps. If you have any that you're interested in or would like to know more about, leave a comment below. Two that I would recommend trying, which adds actions just to add actions, is Toolbox Pro and the Actions app. I'll put links down in the video description. I use those in my 13 action button shortcuts. You can check out that video above and the link is in the video description as well. Number six, I wanna show you how to make a QR code right from shortcuts. I like doing it in shortcuts because A, it's not tied to a third-party service like Bitly and you don't need to pay for it. If you ever tried to make a QR code from one of those services online, a lot of times they have limits on the amount of clicks it can get or traffic. Don't do that, just make your QR code right here. Now one of the powerful parts of shortcuts is it can pull from your clipboard. Now you don't see your clipboard and it's hard to tell what's on it. But if I search for clipboard here in the actions menu, you'll see get clipboard is an action. Get clipboards mean if I copied something, whether it was in Safari or I copied a URL, this shortcut will get that clipboard, whatever I copied, and then use that little string of text or URL in the next action. So for instance, I'm gonna choose get clipboard as the first action, and then I'm gonna choose a second action. I'm gonna search for QR code. And here, generate QR code is an action built into shortcuts. And it's going to generate a QR code from my clipboard. So if I had a URL on my clipboard, it's gonna generate it. I can tap this little arrow here, and there are many actions and shortcuts where there's a little arrow with more options underneath. Error correction, I'm actually not gonna to touch it. A final step I'm gonna add is something you can use in many different shortcuts you build, but it's called Quick Look. Quick Look will preview the text, image, or whatever it is that you're doing in the shortcut. This way you know that you did it properly. Also that Quick Look will have a share button so you can save the image or send it somewhere else. And I'm actually gonna add one more action to this shortcut, and I wanna save this QR code to my photos. I'm gonna choose Save to Photo Album, and by default it chooses Recents, which is basically just like my camera roll. So when I run this shortcut, it's gonna get my clipboard, generate a QR code from the URL on my clipboard, show me that QR code, and then save that QR code to my Photos app. All right, let's give it a try. Here I am on my website, beard.fm. I'm gonna tap the address bar here at the bottom, and then I'm going to copy it. Now that URL is on my clipboard. If I go back to Shortcuts, I'm gonna click play on the shortcut at the bottom. It's gonna generate that QR code. And if you scan this QR code right now, even as you're watching this video, that should go to my website. Now there's a little share button here and I can choose to do lots of things with it, like save the image, send it, text it to someone, email it. But I'm just gonna hit done. And then the final step was it actually saved that QR code to my photos. Let's see if it did that. I'll go over to my photos app. Let me go to recents. And there's the QR code I just created using that shortcut. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, you can actually create a shortcut that makes a QR code from a Wi-Fi network and password. So when someone scans it, they automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. Crazy, right? 
This shortcut is a little more advanced. I'll show you the steps very quickly. You can choose things between like current network or type a network name, type the password. I'll tell you what, I'll actually put a link to this shortcut in the video description. You could just download it and then use it right away. Also, by the way, if you want to share a shortcut with someone, there's a share button at the bottom of every shortcut. You can copy the iCloud link and it's going to generate a link that you can then send to anyone. Then you can download that shortcut and use it themselves. That's actually what I just used to put a link down in the description. All right, and before we get to number seven, just very quickly, don't forget you can search for shortcuts here in the top bar and also create folders for all your shortcuts, which is great for organization. Finally, if you want to edit a shortcut, tap the three dots here in the upper right hand corner and then you'll jump into the editing window we've been in this whole time. If you want to run a shortcut, that's when you tap just in the middle of the shortcut and the shortcut will run like the play button. But for our final shortcut of the day, I want to give you an Apple TV shortcut that's pretty fun. I'm going to hit the plus button to make a new shortcut and if I search in the box, I'll go to Apple TV. You can actually see there's a bunch of actions for Apple TV, but I'm going to use two. The first one is Wake Apple TV. And if you have multiple Apple TVs in your home, you can actually tap which Apple TV and choose the specific TV you want to control. I'll choose my family room Apple TV. When I run this shortcut, that Apple TV will turn on and if it's connected to like a home theater system and a TV that supports that HDCP, then everything just turns on as soon as you run the shortcut. But I'm also going to add a second action. Again, I'll search for Apple TV again. And one of the actions available is show remote control. Now, if I tap that, I'm going to tap the action and then choose the same Apple TV, the family room one. And then when I run this shortcut, it's going to wake this Apple TV and automatically jump to the remote control here on my iPhone for that particular Apple TV. Now, when I run this shortcut, it'll wake that Apple TV and then go to the remote control here on my iPhone. Now, you can combine this like I have with a cool shortcut, and I call this my watch something shortcut. When I tap watch something, I use a menu in the shortcut to have me choose which Apple TV I'm going to watch. Then I can choose the Apple TV and in each menu item, I have wake and show the remote control. Just to give you an idea, here's what that shortcut looks like. I have a menu choosing which Apple TV and then under each menu action, I can wake that Apple TV, set a home kit scene if I have that. My Hue sync box is on this Apple TV, so I've added that action. And then finally show the remote control for that Apple TV on my iPhone. And that's the power of shortcuts. Those are seven easy ones, kind of a shortcuts 101. But if you'd like to see more or have questions about a specific shortcut topic or a thing you want to do with it, drop them down in the comments. I'd love to create more of these videos. And if you want to learn about more shortcuts for the action button, I have a whole video on that. Check it out above or in the description. And you know, subscribe to the channel, like. And speaking of smart home, I actually have an entire smart home tour. I'll put that video right over here. And if you want to check out some of those action button shortcuts, that video is right here as well. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.